Yeah. Welcome to Meet Me at the Sew Machine here in Noblesville, Indiana. It's Dawn, and I've done more potato chip blocks this week. I'm so excited. I got five done, so here I want to show them to you. One, two, I really love that one. Three, this one's nice. Four, and this one's my favorite one that I did. Five, isn't that nice? Just keep all my units right here, you know. These are just ready to pick up and go, pick up and sew, pick up and sew. Just got them in my little box here. Now I'm getting ready to put them in my potato chip tin. Now I've got to tell you, somebody brought me one of our viewers. Oh, I was so excited that day. Oh my goodness, I screamed. I bet everybody in Anderson could hear me all the way from Noblesville because I was so excited to get my Charles chips. You know they still make these, Charles chips? I didn't know I, that. I didn't know that. Yep, they still make them. I saw them online. Uh, but anyway, Vicky. Do they come in the tin? Yeah, they do. Online? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah definitely. Vicki uh, brought me this. She found it at a flea market or someplace she was. So look what I'm going to do. Look, 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 look. Do it. Look at that. Thank you, Vicki. I love it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So safe, sound. Potato chip quilt. It's on its way. I'm getting really excited. I don't know how many I'll have by the end of the year. But my friend Donita, I know I told you about her. She started making them and she couldn't stop. Just like I told you. Just like potato chips. She made 72. She brought me the quilt today so I can show you. I'm so excited. It's a big one. Now she made the 8 inch squares. You know, I'm making the 4 inch ones. She's making the 8 inch ones. Which, I gotta say, her 8 inch ones would fit in the Charles Chips tin because it's big enough. So that's kind of exciting. She needs to give her a Charles Chips tin. I ain't letting her have mine. I like her, but I don't like her that much. Okay, so here's what she did. Isn't that awesome? Don't you think it's beautiful? She just picked a nice neutral to go on the back, which I think was perfect. And for the binding, she picked the perfect binding. But look at all those little uh, pinwheels around the edge. Those are from her leftovers from doing these. You know, she stitched and flipped, and then she moved over half an inch and sewed again and got a little baby. Wow. Yeah, so these are all her babies from all these. Isn't that exciting? That's awesome. And it makes the cutest <clears throat> little border. Yeah, it does. And then she just uh, <clears throat> put the uh, sashing with the um, scrappy cornerstones. It's so cheerful. I mean, anybody, anybody would love to have this for a, a, a quilt of their very own. I just love it. Just love it. The bright colors, uh, it just makes you feel good just to look at it. So, thank you, Donita, for sharing your quilt with us and your potato chips. I hope you're still making more. One of these days, you'll get brave enough and you'll make a four-inch one, and then you won't be able to stop making those. But uh, she just used scrap stuff she had at home. So I'm going to ask uh, Patty or uh, Jennifer, somebody, to come and get this and take it back because Donita's waiting for it. Would one of you girls be willing to come and get this and take it to Donita for me? Are they listening? Yeah. We're, oh, here comes Patty. We're always listening. Okay. Too. Thank you, Patty. Show Patty. This is Patty. Hold on. Let me turn around. It'll be up close. Oh my gosh, look, she's, she's, instead of eating popcorn at the movies, she's eating potato chips. Probably. No, it's, it's a, a potato, potato chip, chip quilt. quilt. <laughs> it's a potato chip I quilt. I got it, I got it. Okay. About potato chip. She's a fast thinker, that okay, one right that's there. Okay, Cappy, <laughs> Cappy acting up, being silly. But I well, want to introduce you to Patty. Patty is our newest member of the, uh, of the concierge team. She uh, is uh, joined Jennifer. Show Jennifer. Jennifer's Carol, coming right in. Let me back up. Yeah. <laughs> so they're working together to uh, help the uh, uh, people who can't come in, who want to buy online, who, uh, oh, you, he wants me over here, who want to uh, call in an order or have something special. They're the, your personal shoppers. Here at Always in Stitches, we want to accommodate everybody. This started when the COVID happened and people couldn't come in, and we definitely wanted those customers to be able to get their supplies. And so this department just exploded here at the shop. 
shop and it's become a little entity all of its own and so uh, Jennifer was getting a little overwhelmed so we pulled Patty in and Patty's fully trained now so anytime you call if Jennifer's not here Patty's here to take over and we want you to feel free to take advantage of that service uh, anytime you need something you say uh, you run out of some fabric that you just bought last week they, they know how to look that stuff up. Mm -hmm. They know how to get on the computer. They even know how to use a mouse. <laughs> I'm telling you, these girls are talented now. You're amazing. You are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, use that service and uh, enjoy that uh, part of the shop because we're here to serve you and we want you to be able to get your hands on what you need. So welcome. Thanks. To Thank coming you. to the team. I'm excited. Alrighty, we'll see you later. Thanks Bye. for taking that to Donita for me. Okay, I'll get it out there. Okay, thanks. Okay, that was fun and exciting. We uh we wanted to do that last week and I forgot. We and, forgot. Yeah, we forgot. So, but uh, yeah, Patty's all trained and she's ready to go. So, and I just made those five potato chip blocks. Cappy eating her potato chips. Took me a minute to kind of catch on to that. But anyway. Um, but she was eating hers out of a bag instead she, of a tin. Yeah, instead of her Charles chips. She was eating Lay's. Oh, what a backslider. Okay, so anyway, I just made those with my beginners and enders as I was making my moto quilt this weekend. And voila, I had got five done. Five done. That was pretty exciting. So uh, if you have them all cut out, they go really, really fast. So, uh, speaking of which, when I did my uh, schoolhouse, let me uh, get this out. Schoolhouse blocks for this month, for this week. Schoolgirl, did I say schoolhouse? I meant schoolgirl. Schoolgirl sampler blocks. We're doing, what are they called? Let me look in my secret book here. We're on blocks. Five and six, the Big Dipper, and two by two. And um, so as I was cutting those out, I was getting so excited because here's the blocks. There's my set. Here's Peter's set. Okay. But you know me. I showed you this last week. You know, I had separated out some of my uh, Kim Deal uh, scrappy scraps. And look what I already had cut. I already had a bunch of these cut, so look what I was able to do. Look what I was able to do. I was able to make that one scrappy because I already had them cut. Isn't that fun? I love the scrappiness so, of it. So instead of getting four different fat quarters out and cutting from four different fat quarters, I already had them cut! Well, somebody asked, too, if they could make it just using scraps. Oh, totally. Definitely. So yes. That's the challenge and the fun of it, is yes, doing it with just scraps. Definitely. As I know, we've said that you're doing your uh, charcoal and cheddar, uh -huh. or coal and cheddar, but you're putting other stuff with it, aren't you? Or are you just using the chul? The I do chul have three purples. Three purples that you Or put two in. purples that I threw yeah. in there. Yeah. Three purples. Yeah. So From another line. Oh, I say the scrappier the better, don't you? I do. I said I wasn't going to do this because our new light flashes in my glasses and here I am doing it. But uh, I'm going to try not to do that so that the light... Uh, we're, I think we maybe need to get the light a little higher. I, I'm not sure. We're still playing with all that. So we're, we're not that tech savvy yet, but we're getting there. So I'm excited about today's uh, blocks. They went together really, really fast. My points all came out good. I was happy about that. So I think Peter did a good job on his uh, selection of colors. I love how he put this stripe in here. Isn't that just yummy? And it really enhances the look of this block. I really like that. Thank, uh, you. Thank you. Good contrast here. See, he played with the background in the black. I love that. Thank you. I wanted to carry, this is a new color for me in my set of blocks, but uh, it's kind of a bluish green with these funny pears. I think those are fun. And that's going to introduce some brown because I kind of want to get some brown in this quilt. And I see how you tied in the green dot. I tied in the little green dot with the same color there as that. And then I, I love this. I love this gold and I loved this little fabric that had the, all the colors in it. And if you'll notice, this has all those little colors, uh, dots in the background. And while I was cutting that, I just cut enough to do my uh, 
because I did have to cut these. I didn't have background cut. I just had these cut. But how convenient. I thought, oh, I'd love to do that scrappy, but do I really want to cut into, you know, four fat quarters just to get a little strip like that? And then I thought, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold the horses. I think I already got those cut. So I went to my little bin, and lo and behold, there they were, and I could just do that wet lickety split. So um, I'm going to cut... Uh, out of my Peter memory blocks. I'm gonna cut my fabric that I need. And when I was looking, just so happens I've previously already cut my background the correct size for this one. So all I need is two blocks, two squares this size of my uh, focus fabric that I'm using on this one. You know, on this one, I'm using the same uh, fabric throughout all the blocks. I'm going to use this one fabric over and over and over because this is my memory. Fa this is my uh, oh, fabric good. that I want yeah. to focus on because you know who, you know who got it for me and it's special. And I wanted to do a special project with it. And what is more special than four inch squares? Just hardly nothing, I'll tell you that. Just hardly nothing. Chloe. Chloe's the only thing. Chloe Bear. Chloe, she's the only thing. Now, here are my, uh, here are my blocks that I kind of have to uh, kind of get inspiration from. Draw inspiration from your previous blocks. And what I came up with is I want to carry some of this orange. Ooh. Some of this orange. I wanted something really contrasty, you know, to give me that, to give me that uh, real distinctive look here. So I needed something really contrasty. So I could go value contrasty, light or dark, or I could go uh, both value and hue. And that's what I did. I went really a drastic uh, color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this a little bit bigger. I don't have my turning mat today. I don't know why I left it at home. I was using it and it was on my cutting table. Cappy brought hers so that we could have a spin off and then I went and forgot mine. So we're gonna have to plan a little better. So we're gonna have us a spin off. See which spinner uh, cutting mat is the is the favorite. Okay. Now look what I did, Peter. I saw. I didn't. I want the I want I the was, viewers I to see. I saw that when you when you cut it. I did I saw the salvage, but yeah, I, I didn't know what width you were gonna cut. Yeah. So see, look, I see right there. Yeah. I didn't cut over far enough. So all I'm gonna do is now see it's not always lost well um just pull this out so you don't lose that big piece too well look what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go the other way on the other one and now i'm gonna cut me some one and a half there you go and i'm gonna cut me some one inch ones oh i can get me two one and a half nope just an inch you out know, of that you know one. what i almost threw away the other day what? when i was cutting my blocks what um I had a piece of fabric that was left over from when I cut my pieces. Uh huh. And I looked at it and I almost threw it away. And I was like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't really get an inch out it of it. It looks one. like an inch. Yeah, and what happened? It was an inch and an eighth, so I saved it. Woo, did you go ahead and cut it down to an inch? Uh uh. You saved it as an inch and an eighth? Uh huh. Why would you do that? I don't know. Okay. I'm not there yet. Okay, so look, look, now see that just goes right in my one inch, and this one goes here in my one and a half. Look at that! Stat adding to that one and a half inch. That's what I used for that one that I needed. So that was pretty exciting. So now that these are the same size, I can go ahead and cut my squares. Now see, this is when I really needed my turntable. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I'm gonna have to get one for here and one for home. Man. Where did you think of all the blocks that people are posting in our insiders group? Oh my goodness! Aren't those beautiful? Weren't you inspired by yes. all that? 
I was. That Ginger Mahaffey, she's going to town, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She is posting, and I am loving them. Love, love, loving them. Uh, yeah, anytime you guys want to post pictures, you can't do it here on YouTube. They don't take pictures here on YouTube. But uh, now I just cut those two squares in uh, half both ways on the diagonal. Uh, but, uh, yeah, on our Insiders group. Now, that's just uh, Always in Stitches Insiders group on Facebook, right? Yep. And uh, you have to join that, right? Uh -huh. Yep. And uh, so just ask to join. Cappy will check you out. Make sure you're not a mass murderer or something like that. And uh, then she'll approve you. And then you can post pictures of your four inch blocks so now I've, I've got that one all ready to go and of course you know I'm going to fold this back up and what am I going to do I'm going to put this right in with it so that if I need that size again I've got my scrap right that goes with this quilt right here and then I'm going to at the same time I'm going to cut for this quilt I mean for this block and I'm not going to do it like the book says, okay? The book says to cut uh, segments. If you're making it scrappy, you do have to cut the segments. But I'm going to strip piece it or string piece it or however you want to say that. Um, I'm not going to make that same mistake that I made a while ago. I, I was trying to be too frugal. Frugal make frugalton. Yeah. You know how I am. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna turn that around, see if I had my turntable. I could have just turned my turntable. Oh well, you know. Tomorrow is another day. Okay, and then now I went through and I've added this up. And I've added these, and it comes to uh 10 inches, so I'm going to cut this at about 11 inches just to give myself a little leeway. Just going to, you know, just chop it off. I'm not going to even make sure it's straight or anything. Just going to use my mat here. Just go like that. Get that out of the way. And then I already did that to this piece. Now, isn't that going to be pretty? Mm -hmm. Isn't that going to be really mm -hmm. nice? Okay. All right, let's take this block and this block over to the uh, sewing machine. Let's meet me at the sewing machine. You dropped, you dropped 11 inches. Ah! No. <laughs> okay. Was that the one you were going to sew? No, I, oh yeah, maybe it was. Thank you. I think that's the one you're going to sew. Thank you for keeping me on. Oh, goodness. The vapors, I've got the vapors. It's Monday. I wanted to show you something. The other day when I was talking to you about my uh, my little pre-cuts that I had in here. And I was showing that I had all these one-inch pieces. Somebody says, well, what do you do with them? What do you do with those? What do you do with all those one-inch? Look how tiny they are. They're so tiny, aren't oh they? Oh, my gosh. So at home, uh, at home, my beginners and enders are my one-inchers. So I have... A basket of one inch lights <laughs> and a basket of one inch darks. Oh my gosh. And so as my beginner and ender, I just pick up a dark and I pick up a light and I put them together, right sides together, just like this. Your shoes are on. Oh, thank you. Take the shoes off. Taking off the shoes. Yeah. I'm glad I wear easy shoes to take on and off. Right, like they're not boots or something that lace all the right. way around your ankles. Right. Scoot that all the way up to the needle. Lower my stitch length a little bit here. I think I'll take it to 1.5. Then, after I get a whole bunch of those, see now I've got a whole bunch of those. Because nice. I just cut them off. They're beginners and enders, and I just cut them off and put them in this basket. Nice. So in the evening, when I'm too tired to sew, but I still want to be in my sewing room, I'll sit and press these open. And so then the next time I come along, if I want it to be 
what I'm doing is I'm making nine patches. Peter, what'd you do with my nine patches? Okay. Thank you, sir. I have to be very careful with that. Yeah. It drops easy. It does drop easy. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm making nine patches. Little baby nine patches. Little patch. bit, and I'm making dark ones. Now, what do you mean you're making dark ones? I'm making dark ones. Little four baby. four Little dark baby. ones on the outside versus four light ones on the outside. See what I'm saying? If they had four, if there were five uh, squares that were light, they'd be light nine patches. If there's five squares that are dark, they're dark nine patches. So I'm making dark nine patches because I'm going to be putting a light one in between each one. So that's what I'm, that's the plan right now. You know, it could change at any time. So what I do then, if I, once I have a whole bunch of these, then as my beginners and enders, I'll just pick up another dark one and put it on the other side and use it as a beginner and ender a whole bunch. And I'll just sew on it as my beginner. Then I'll sew on another one as my ender. And before you know it, I have a whole bunch of little patches. I just leave them in there. Then when the, when I cut off at the end of my sewing line, I put it in the appropriate basket. So that's a tour. So then when I get that three one off, then I'll put it in my little three basket. Okay? So, and on and on and on. So those just sit at my table at home, just like that. Just like that. And then when I get two rows of two, I can do that with them. And then when I get, get ready to make a nine patch, then I just do that. And it's a never ending ender and beginner project. So it's pretty awesome. Now, let me show you this. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's an addiction, people. They have meds for this. Okay, so here's a bunch of them. Now what I do after I've get, got them made is I count out tens, groups of 10. And then I'm gonna get over here and I put them in my little bags of 10. See that? Oh, they're little so dime cute. bags. They're so cute. <laughs> Peter and I decided these were dime bags. Those for, are groups of ten. For all the druggers. <laughs> we don't know anything. Not the family, the druggers. That's a family, isn't it? <laughs> not for the family, the druggers, but the people who sell drugs. Don't they sell dime bags? Yeah, learned but that. You're, not, you're not selling those, are you? Uh -uh. I learned that on uh, Law and Order. So. But anyway, these are my version of a dime pack. And I have ten little half, uh, ten little nine patches in here, and I literally have thousands of these at home. Okay, so Dawn, what are you gonna do with those when you get those done? Sell them. No, I'm not gonna sell, sell them. Sell them on the street. No, look at what I did. Look at what I did with some of my one-inch squares. Look at this. Isn't that yummy delicious? Wow. I just love it. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, I love it. I want to make a bed one. Oh, it would be beautiful as a bed quilt. I want to make a bed one. But can you imagine how heavy it would be? Because that's all the best part. Seams, oh, I know. That would be the best part. But it's a nice sofa one. And I can just, ooh, it's so nice. I love it. I put flannel on the back. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, feel that. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice Ooh. flannel on the back. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of seams, wow. you know? And so I wanted it to really, really uh, be a hefty, fun quilt. But isn't that stunning? That is amazing. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I had a good time making that. That was, uh, that just thrills my heart. So there's that. Whew. So that's what I do with all my little one inch squares. And let me tell you that I showed this to my Friday group. And uh, when I was showing this to them, I knew I was gonna show it to you guys. So I just left them here. And do you know what? I grieved for them. Oh, you oh, missed them. You know what I had to do? What? Is I had to cut some one inch squares so I'd have some beginners and enders. <laughs> Oh, man. Because <laughs> once I got all my uh, potato chip blocks made, I still had some things I wanted to you do. You can't go on the street and buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody sells one-inch squares. Nobody sells them on the corner. You can't go down to the corner and buy them. 
You can buy other things, but not those. So anyway, how funny was that? But I did, I missed them. Now, who would have thought that you could miss your one inch squares? But I did. Okay, now this is gonna be the fun part of making two at a time because you're gonna get to, uh, you're not gonna have to start and stop as much. So I'm gonna take this, these two strips that I made for, the, for this block right here, okay? I made them the width that the book says, but the length is 10 and a half to 11 inches. Just give yourself a little wiggle room. Okay, now before I take that out of the machine, I'm gonna start on my second block, you see? So I kind of have to get it set up. Move this over a little bit. I'm gonna use Peter's block as a little inspiration here. I hope he, Peter, you didn't do it right. <laughs> I'm gonna do it like mine because mine's done like the book. <laughs> See how, it, it's not that it's not right. It's not, it's just a design change. Oh my God, I'm dying it's, over No, here. It's, not, it's not that it's wrong. It's not, people. People, it's not. It's just that the book oh, has dang. the light being at the top here and at the dark one over here. So it's it's a design change. It's a design change. And you know Peter, he likes to be an individual. So he's a rebel rouser. That Peter's so a rebel rouser. So I think rouser. yours is wrong, Dawn. You think mine is? I think yours is wrong. Oh, mine might be wrong. Why don't you hold it up and look? <gasps> look at that, I think mine is. Mine is the design change. <laughs> Peter did it the correct Take way. Take your words back, Dawn. Take I'm it back. I'm taking them back. I'm taking them back. I'm sorry, Peter. You're, I'm, I'm so sorry. You're forgiven. But does it really matter? No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but we love to tease each other, don't we? So, oh, my okay, gosh. So you know what I'm going to do for this one? I'm going to change it around. I'm going to do it the way you did it. I'm going to use yours as an inspiration. Well, that's what you said when yeah, you sat it down there. Yeah, that's what I did You say. said you were going to use it as an inspiration. I did, didn't and then I? you said, well, wait a minute. I'm not going to use it because you did it wrong. <laughs> so now look. Oh, my they're gosh. They're all four the same. These are four <sighs> blocks that are all the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay four, one, two, three, if I can get them apart, three, four, and then I'm going to lay the other four down here in the other position. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to do the same thing to these. One, two, three, four. Do you think I don't do this at home? I do. I do this. I sit and sing to them. Uh, if Chloe's in the room, she helps me sing. Oh, oh, that's how she sings. So I'm singing. I put one, two, three, and she'll go. Oh, oh. That's my dog imitation. Should I go on the road with that act or not? Sure. Should I buy a bus? It'll take away from your sewing time, though. Oh, I think. Oh darn! I could have a, a featherweight on the on the bus. Is somebody hurt it? <laughs> It does sound like a wounded. Somebody get injured? <laughs> it sounds like a wounded dog, doesn't it? Somebody got their paw <laughs> caught in the that's machine. That's Chloe. That's my imitation of Chloe singing. Okay. So I'm gonna go. Just go ahead and sew these together. And sew these together. Now, if you don't want to start on that pointy end, that's kind of tricky. Uh, but I'm feeling daredevilish today. You could go like this and sew it on the flatter side instead of that uh, pointed side. You know, that gives your machine a little more chance, a little more to grab onto. Both feed dogs would be picking up the fabric. If you start on the point, if you go like this and you start on the point, the only feed dog that you're using is this feed dog over here because this feed dog doesn't have any fabric on it. But if you turn it this way, you see both feed dogs would be on the fabric. 
because they it would go in like that. So you kind of consider that every now and again. Uh, if you've got a single hole plate on your, this is the uh, the plate for your sewing machine. If you if you've got a single hole plate, you don't have to worry about it as much until you want to do a zigzag stitch <laughs> and you forget to change your plate. It's bad news. Just gotta say. Done four of those. I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna go back to that other block. So I'm gonna get my little cutting mat. Oh, I gotta press that open. Now, some people would think, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and cut that before I press them. No, don't do that. Then you have to pick up four things to press. This way you only have to pick up one thing to press. Then you can cut them. And if you press this to one side, it's going to get wiggly and jiggly. The longer it gets, the wigglier and jigglier it gets. It gets misshapen. So your strip doesn't come out straight. But if you're pressing open with your clapper, it's going to be a nice straight seam. And there will not be any wigglies and jigglies in your strip set. I call this a strip set. Who that iron gets hot. Okay, see how nice and straight that is? See, it doesn't wiggle. We need help with the register. If I were to press that to one side, that would just, that fabric would uh, move on me and uh, pull one way or the other and uh, it would just not be good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line that up. I'm going to bring that way on down there because I don't want to waste any of that fabric. I'm going to make sure that it's lined up on the seam. It's lined up here. It's lined up there. I'm going to straighten that edge by putting this on a parallel line. This makes sure that's on a parallel line. Make sure that's on a parallel line. Get my cutter out. Straighten my edge. Then I'm going to turn my mat. And now I'm going to cut the increments. And the increments are the width. Remember we cut this, the one increment. Now we're going to cut this the width of the second part of the increment. And see, I just hardly had any waste. That's just my half inch waste that I counted on, you know, cause I did it like 10 and a half instead of 10. So um, now I'm all ready to go. I'm ready to go with that second. And that's just how easy it was. One seam and voila, I'm ready to make that whole block. So here's how it goes. It goes with the light on the outside there, the light on the top, the dark on the bottom, and this like that. See that? So I'm going to move that over to my little, keep that there. Oh, I do like that with that dark. You know, if you would have yeah, put a, green. if you would, green. yeah, the dark green. If you would have put red in there, it would have been a red cross. You know, like the, like the uh, volunteer group. The yeah. Red cross. Red cross. Yeah. <coughs> so. Okay. <coughs> I'm gonna do these now. Finish up on this. And I hope I'm sewing these right. Correct. We'll find out when it all goes together. Now, before I open that up, I'm going to cut that little, uh, this off. Because if I opened it up, I pressed it open, I'd have one on each side to contend with, and I'd have to make two cuts. This way, I can just cut it off all at once. Don't have to make two cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that <clears throat> before I press them open. So, let me get that 
Now see, I, I need a little trash bucket over here, don't I? I got you need that little, you need that little thimble bucket. Yeah, that I we do. have up at the cash wrap. Yeah, well, I have little buckets. You know me. I love that little thimble. I don't, have. I don't have a shortage of buckets. That's for sure. Now before I go on, because I don't want to have to be ripping out, I'm gonna go ahead and press these. Make sure. Don, yeah, look Don, at that. Don, do they make smaller? Um, Seam rippers for when you go down and stitch length. They do so you make, can get the blade in there. They the do end. make different size seam rippers. And um, basically, there's small, large, and then there's jumbo ones. I've gotta get uh, me, I'm going to have to get a small one. Uh, yeah. Because I just, just have that medium size, but since I've been doing the smaller stitch length, like yeah, you suggest, yeah. which I absolutely love. Now, this I clover one. I noticed mine one, doesn't go in there that well. This clover one. It's not that it's small, but it goes to that nice point. Okay. This is my favorite one. It's really thin. Feel how thin that is. That oh, blade. Yeah, that's thin. See, that's thin. Yeah. So it gets really underneath that stitch. Okay. And so this is my favorite seam ripper of all. I'm gonna have to pick one of those up. Yeah, today. yeah. It's called the clover, and it just comes in and it has this nice but the and one of the best things I like about it is not Lays round. Flat. Yeah, it's not rounded it You don't have to roll chase it around. Table. Right, right. I got so, to use my new ruler, my three and a half oh, by twelve. Yeah. How, I you love, think? Do you it. love it. Oh my gosh. Okay, good, good. Love it. So now I gotta work yeah. on uh upgrading all my rulers. Yeah. Okay. Well, and make sure that you take a marker or something and get your initials on them. Because if you go to a retreat or a class and everybody else has the they same all look ruler the same. as you, right, you'll want to make sure you come home with your ruler. And uh, so there, I did do all those correctly. So I'm happy about that. So let's go ahead and finish these up. Um, just lay them right sides together. And I got my quarter inch, got my foot right where I need it. <clears throat> just making these as I go. And uh, by doing the strip piecing on the other one, didn't that go really fast? Now all I have to do is sew those segments together. Yeah, that was lucky split. Yeah, that was. That, I mean, you could do a whole quilt like that in no time. That would take no time at all. Right, because you just make your strips. Don't get your strips too long. I mean, you can make them from salvage to yeah, salvage. Yeah, like the 42-inch to 42-inch strip. Phew. But you know what? It does get a little bit nerve-wracking when you have to uh, open those seams because, I mean, just any slight little movement of your iron can wiggle, make that seam wiggle. So about 18 inches is all I'll go. That's you know, a good, that's, a, that's a fat quarter. Fat quarter. Yeah. So that's half the width. So, okay, now I've got all those sewn. I'm going to start sewing this together. So I'm going to bring that over here. And am I going to pin? Well, yes, I am. And you know why? I'm not matching any seams, but I've got this seam that I'm going to put under. I could put it over and not pin. I could put it to the top and not pin. But if I put it to the bottom, I'm going to pin it because I don't want my feed dogs catching that. So I, I think I won't pin. I think I'll just go ahead and put that on the top. And then I'll be able to look and make sure that it doesn't uh, curl with the foot. <clears throat> so now let me do this. So essentially, the other block became my beginner and ender. See that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty cool? That's awesome. Yeah, that's what's great about making two at a time. Is you get to use that other one as your beginner and ender. As you're making the components for the one, you even you're making the other one at the same time. And I just love that. I just love that. Takes a little thought, but, you know, if it's one of those days when you can concentrate, that's always nice. If it's not, then you just go ahead and uh, do your one-inch squares like I do. 
You know, anything you can do with the one inch, you can also do with the one and a half. If you don't want to cut your fabric down to one inch, you feel more comfortable with one and a half or two inch. Or two and a half. You know, whatever. Whatever makes you comfortable. That's what you need to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. You don't uh -huh. need to be doing something that you're going to be struggling with. Yeah, you just, just because the, I do it. You do the one inch because you found that um, you were trying to figure out what the smallest piece of fabric was worth saving that you could sew into a blo a, a new block, right? Yeah, and I just, yeah. And one I inch is like your limit, right? Uh, yeah, because, you know, if you do one inch, you've got a quarter of an inch on this side, a quarter of an inch on that side, and when that turns under, that's a half an inch. So unless you're doing eighth inch seams, you can't do any smaller than an inch. Right. Because it sews in at a half an inch, and that's what your seam allowance is. So, see, when I do these, look at what I'm talking about. See, when I do these, my seam allowance fills up my block. See that? So I'm going to have another seam over here that's going to fill up this. So I can't sew any smaller than that. Yeah. Unless I'm foundation piecing, and then I can, you know. You can sew much more intricate with foundation piecing. Um because the seams don't have to be mm. as big. And you're actually not sewing seams, you're sewing on the line of the paper. So, okay, I've got these all ready, look at that. Those are all ready to go. And am I gonna pin? Peter, what would you guess? Let me see, oh, uh, yes. Yes, on yes, those, yeah. definitely. And you wanna make sure that they're opposite, okay? You wanna make sure they're opposite. So, I'm gonna, Match that seam up, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and match that right up. Now this I'm gonna have to sew on the point. So I'm gonna get that under and I'm gonna get that right up next to my needle. So that goes right in. Take that pin out. Then this is where I would get my stiletto out. I'm always going to put that right there so that I know where that is. I'm going to get my stiletto out and hold that those two ends of the fabric together. And I'm going to do that four times. Now, what I like to do at home is if I had a whole big bunch of these, I'd sit and pin for a little while. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just pin one and then sew, and pin one and then sew. I'd pin them all. I'd sit here and pin, and then I'd sit and sew. Because you kind of get into a rhythm, you know, a pinning rhythm. You know, that could be a new TV show, Pinning Rhythm. You know, you got your Soul Train and you got your American pen. Bandstand. Woo, you're showing your age. But you could have you could have you some pinning rhythm. Pinning rhythm nation. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this together. And I'm gonna sew these. Can you believe how many we've already done? I mean, this is block five and six. And Peter, how many have you already done? Because you can't hardly stand it. You go on, you go in into the book and you just can't stop. Uh, 26. You've done 26 so far? Yeah. <gasps> Look at you. Oh, I'm so impressed. And I've seen them and they're gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I've, I've had good help though. Yeah. Well, they are gorgeous. I've been tuning into the Meet Me at the Sewing Machine episodes. Oh, good. Good. What channel is that? YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me at the sewing machine. Me and Peter. Peter and I. Peter and I. That's the proper, I think, uh, way to say it. Okay. I tell you, my dad was watching the Hallmark Channel last night, and I must have been just, you know, emotional because, you know, 
know they're the same stories over and over, but some of them just really get to you, <laughs> especially the ones with the animals. Oh. And last night they had one with horses, Peter. Oh. You would have loved it. And three dogs. Oh. And she was losing her farm. But oh, the cowboy, gosh. the good-looking, singing cowboy came to her rescue. So you know it was going to work out because it's Hallmark, you know. Yeah, now if it were Lifetime, yeah, now somebody if it was would Lifetime, get... Lifetime, they'd get slaughtered. The, the and, horse would have got stolen. Uh, and it'd be nasty. The daughter would have been kidnapped. It would have been just nasty. The dogs would have been sold. Uh-huh, see. Now... I don't and know. And somebody would have been, somebody would have been, um, had a, a mistress. Yeah, yeah, all that, <laughs> all that scandalous stuff. Now I can watch movies, and I'm, you know, I can watch that Law and Order, and I can watch all that where people are getting shot and stabbed, and you know, it doesn't affect me one bit. I know it's all really fake, but you let an animal like they pretend to kill an animal. And I just can't watch it, Peter. I, I just, can't. I can't watch it. I know it's fake. Oh, but, I will turn my head. But I will you shut can, I my just. Ears. Oh no! I turn the channel. I can't deal with it. Yeah. I just can't deal with it. And those those commercials where the animals are in distress. I can't deal I can't, with those. Yeah. No, can't deal with those. It makes you just want to go to your bank, your bank, and just draw out all your money and send it to the Humane Society. Oh. Oh. I tell you, though, if I ever did win the lottery, of course, I won't because I don't buy a ticket. But if I ever did, you know, I'd have to say I'd have to save me some animals. That's just all there is to it. They're so defenseless and they don't really have a choice. You know, they didn't ha they didn't ask to be put into the world. And now there's one on saving the elephants. Can oh, you I haven't, imagine? I haven't seen that. Hey, can you imagine a generation of, of people living not ever being able to see an elephant? Now, I didn't know that there was that they were endangered. Did you? No. I did not know that. So that's really shocking to me. But you know, they're they're taking them for their ivory, their you know tusks and all that, and that's just so sad to see all that. So I can go with fake ivory, can't you? I can go without even having the, even the fake ivory. Really? Yeah. Okay. How about fur? You feel anything about fur? Are you a fur wearer, or do you are you okay with fake fur? Did you notice I cut those ends off oh, again? You did. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't even like fake fur. You don't like fake fur. Okay. Well, I've got a fur around my uh, purse, or around my tote bag, but it's fake, and, you know, it's fine with me. I don't need real fur, but you know what? The Lord did put some animals on the earth to keep, you know, Indians warm and the prairie people warm. I mean, that's what God put them there for. So, I mean, you know, you got to think about those things. The circle of life and all. I could not be a farmer. I could oh. not be a farmer. I'd have names for all of my I animal babies. I would not babies. be eating chicken. I would not be eating no chicken. You would still have to go to the grocery store to get by it. <laughs> <laughs> buy an unfriendly chicken because I would be able to eat somebody I, I don't knew. even think you could eat an unfriendly chicken. I if you had an unfriendly chicken I on knew. the farm. Because <laughs> you'd still have a name for that little dirt ball. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make sure that those square up exactly what they're supposed to and they do. So... Hip, hip, hooray with that. Before I sew them in, I wanted to make sure that they uh, sewed in what they were what they were supposed to. I didn't check these, but I knew they were because I cut them. Uh, so, here we go. I'm going to press that one open, get it ready to go. I'm going to lay these back out. Now, this is where I messed up before, okay? So, I'm going to lay these like Peter laid his out. He did his just like the book. I thought I'd done mine just like the book too, but I didn't. Okay. Look at that. How it's, go. it's so cool how it makes a little pinwheel in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't think it's going to, but then you get it all sewn uh -huh. in and it does. It's uh -huh, just uh -huh, really uh -huh. fun. So now I'm going to do it two at a time here. And am I going to pin? Well, yes, I am. I'd probably pin that dog. You would? Yeah. Because you want these corners. to match, right? Yeah, these you corners. Have those, don't want to lose your points. No, you do not want to. This is really important. 
So I'm gonna bend that back, make sure that those go right in line with each other. When I pin, I know my feed dogs are not going to obscure my fabric. And that's why I love these thin patchwork pins is because they don't distort my fabric. They don't bump my fabric, uh, make a big lump in my fabric. They lay pretty flat. And that's important to me. Get this piece out. This is why it's so handy, Peter, to have everything right here at the sew machine. Because you can just press, and you can cut, and you can sew, and you can do all the things. And you don't have right to chase here. any of your stuff down. Yeah, and there's no aerobics involved, mm -hmm. you see? So anytime uh, you can do something mm -hmm. without exercising, that's the bee's knees for me. Okay. I was watching a uh, YouTube video last night, and she said uh, banana pants. She, <laughs> instead of bee's knees, she likes banana pants. So that's pretty funny. Banana pants. I've never heard that before. Have you? Uh-uh. First time. First time. Now, I was really excited today to get here because I didn't know what colors I was going to choose. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I was anxious to get here. Now, at first, I had pulled out a light uh, gold, a real light gold, and I didn't care for it. I, it just didn't have the, huh. it didn't have the oomph that I wanted, you know, the impact of the, uh, of the contrast. Okay, now i got to look at this. What have I got here? I've got that one that looks like that, and I've got this one that looks like that. So I'm going to put those together. Right in the middle, they're the same, unless you've done them uh, with uh, Scrappy. And you can look at your book and see what the dimensions are for the Scrappy. It's the same thing, only I already had them cut. Na 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 boo boo. That's what's so good about saving your scraps. That would have been somebody else's trash, I'm telling you. One time, every year we have a, a well, except for the COVID years, but uh, the COVID years. <laughs> The COVID decade. The COVID decade. Uh, anyway. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> the Moda girls get together for a retreat. And one year, they all brought their scraps over to me. Oh, was that fun. Oh, my goodness. I still have them at home. I haven't cut them down, but I'm going to someday. Cut them all into inch squares. I'm going to have them in. All-star Moda girl. From all their scraps. Now look, that block underneath my um, sew machine right there is already done, except for pressing. This one's gonna be done in one more seam. And I did them both at the same time. I just love that. I just love that that happened. So now, put that, now see, here's where I messed up before. See, I did that instead of doing this. You know, so it isn't going to matter. It's not going to matter one way or the other how you sew them together. But this is the tricky part right here, Peter. This is it. This is the money maker. You've got to make sure that this point. Now, can they see? Am I in the light good enough? Mm -hmm. See, that's why I love this light yeah. so much. Pull that over. See that point right there? Now, that is four different fabric seams coming together right there. And then I've got the same four over here. Okay, so if I just willy-nilly put that on there, what are the chances that all of those eight fabrics are going to come together in one spot? Well, not very good unless I pin. 20%. Yeah, you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not that lucky. So I'm going to put a pin right in the point. Can they see that? Mm -hmm right in the point of that one, and then I'm gonna put the pin right in the point of this one. Go straight through. Go ahead and push that all the way in. 
and see what? They may not match up. They may not. But you know that if you pin it right there, that it's going to pin in the correct place. Say, say you're going to sew that seam, and your seam goes below where that pin head is. What should you do? I don't understand what you're asking me. Well, I've sewn these together before, and my quarter inch can sometimes go below this point right here. And then when I open it up, I lost, I lost my point, my corners. Well, as you're sewing, you can see where the point is. If you know to look for it. Well, you should look for it because that's why you <laughs> well, have I it on top. Know. See? That's why you have it on top. But I didn't know because when I was pushing it under my um my foot pedal, for some reason I was subconsciously pushing it towards the You might have been taking like a like a thread more than a quarter of an yeah. inch or something and you weren't really paying real I close wasn't. attention. And I couldn't figure out what was happening. Yeah, and that's what's you know, even if you have to fudge it a little bit and come that's in a I've little bit. I've been doing You that. can do that, you know. It's what's more important, to have a quarter inch or to fudge and get your point. Get that point, baby. It de it depends upon how close the point is to quarter. If this point got cut off, yeah. clear down remake into here, <laughs> you might have to remake the block. That's what I was going to say. I had to do that. Yeah. I had to remake a block. Yeah. But if you've gone through all the cautionary tales of cutting it out correctly and sewing it with the quarter inch, like you're supposed to, uh -huh. um... And did you notice we didn't have to square it up because it came out exactly what it was supposed to come out. So we didn't have to square it up. So that was good. Now, just for caution, I'm going to put my, I took that pin out, but I'm going to take my stiletto and I'm going to press down making sure that those fabrics do not, do not slip and slide from each other. And hopefully we're going to have a nice looking middle there okay now this one's done that one's done so i need a beginner and an ender so i'm going to pick up a beginner yeah yeah one inch square a dark and a light and i'm going to just go ahead and use that as my Now see, if I was doing it on this, look at all those begin look at all those nine patches I could have had done. That's like a zillion right there. <laughs> I mean, for heaven's sakes, Dawn. So but sometimes you don't have the time to mess with, you know, picking them up and doing all that. Okay, here's the big reveal. <gasps> look at that. Pretty good. Yeah. I, I would accept yeah. that. That's, I would call that worthy. acceptable. That is quilt worthy. Yes, definitely. So you let's know what, go You ahead. know what happens if I make a block and it's not quilt worthy? What? It becomes a coaster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted to talk to you about, we'll bring your coaster next time, and I'll talk to you about making one of these four things into a, a coaster by putting and sewing around and not putting a binding on oh, it. Oh, I'd love to see that. You know? I think that's a great idea. Just make like a pillow. Okay. Uh, and then... That binding gave me Yeah, nightmares. that binding was like, uh, yeah, torture. So anyway... You I, can see I only made one. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but I was thinking about that the other night, and I thought to myself... I'd love to make more. Man, Peter needs to know the other way of doing it without putting a binding on it. Or, you know, there's that way where you bring the back up and the binding is part of the back. Oh, okay. Have you ever done that before? Once. Yeah. You could do that, too. I want to see the way that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Just becomes a little... Okay, look at that. Look at that green. Isn't that stunning? And it kind of reminds me of the one that she did. Yeah. A little bit. But And then there's that one. Love let's it. put them. Let's go put them together. Let's put them on the look design at wall. them. Let's look at them. Okay, now here's Peter's on this side. And mine on that side. And there's Peter's. And I did two of these. But you know I definitely love that one that has the, all the colors, don't you? I do. Okay, so here's my Peter memory block. Peter memory block. Where are my other ones? Okay, thank you, Peter. Okay, let's look at them. 
Now, Peter's so tall that he can just do this lickety split, but I have to get up on my hippie toes. Do you say you have to get on your hippie toes? Tippy, tippy toes. Hippie toes? Hippie toes. Hippie toes. Are you calling me a hippo? No, I'm saying hippie, like a hippie. Oh, like a hippie. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Oh! Isn't that cool? I'm so excited. That looks amazing. I know. You know what? They kind of all go together anyway. They do. They do. I mean, you could put those all in the same You could. Belt. You could. There would be no reason why you couldn't. Now, this bothers me. I don't know what happened right th Oh, it's just the way it was laying on the thing. I think it's okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. kind of looks like it had a little tuck in it, but it doesn't. I just need to press it a little better. But, oh, well, I just think those. And look, Peter, these don't even look like the same block, really. That's the way awesome. That, you know, the way that, yeah. that they are. But I just love that. I do, too. Oh, you guys, Gosh, show us that yours. Make, that would make, yeah, show us yours. Yeah, that would be so much We fun. showed you ours. Now it's time for yeah, you to show us yours. Yeah, you show me yours. I'll show you mine. So anyway, that's good. Uh, I didn't have enough time to sh uh, talk to you about the iron because I wanted to show Donita's uh, potato chip quilt. But uh, next time, next Monday, we'll talk about getting a new iron because we got a new iron. And I want to show you how to take care of your iron. So I'll see you then. Hey, if you get inspired, you can make one-inch nine patches. And you can show us those on our yes, Facebook. Yes, 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 yes. But if you're not as crazy as me, that's okay. Just keep making those potato chip blocks and those four-inch squares. It wouldn't hurt anything to try, though. Right. It's, that's right. It's free. Yeah, it's just... Doesn't cost anything. You can probably get in your trash can right now and find yep. some one-inch fabrics. I'm going to go dig through mine when I get Are home. Because really? I know there's a bunch of one-inches in there. Is that there. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And look at what a little coaster that would make. Now, if you put four of them together. I'd do four together. Yeah, you could have you a nice little nine-patch coaster yeah. right there, buddy. Yeah, buddy. So, that'd be awesome. Okay, see you next Monday here at the Sew Machine. Have a good week. Bye.